Happy Bowtie Friday. I'm Austin. I'm here with the Build Guild. We're building cool stuff. Uh, we're gonna kick it right off. This what we do is we get together every couple of weeks and we show off the cool things that we're building with Scaffold E and uh, record it and put it on YouTube for people to find. So let's just start out with Carlos. I think Carlos is working on ABI Ninja maybe, but I can't, I'm not sure. Let me make sure you can share your screen. Ready to go when you are Carlos. Thank you. Um, yes, I think I, I already saw last time uh, something about the ABI Ninja. So I just want to share with you guys like some of the updates that I've been working on. And let me share my screen. Can you see it? Okay, cool. Um, so the first update is that uh, I started working with a, with a designer, uh, Andrea. She's a UI UX designer, so she's going to make sure that ABI Ninja looks uh, good and is easy to, to use. Uh, this is some of the Figma uh, that she sent me. Um, this is some of the early prototypes. Uh, this is like the main screen. And uh, this is something interesting about the, the, the contract component. Which right now is look like this, you know, like the the usual scaffold if contract component, which is like everything is super big, it's just like a a pile of of stuff. So I think um, having like you know like the these sidebars in the left side, we will have the um, like a quick navigation, uh, which will follow you along the the page when you scroll. On the right side, we'll have like all the contract variables all together. And on the middle, we have like the you know like the methods to call on the contract. So um, I have started like implementing some of these uh, designs. Uh, she's probably going to kill me when she sees what I'm doing with her designs. But Andrea, if you are watching this, uh, this is just a prototype and the first iteration. It will get it will get better. So okay, so this is the the main page now. It's still. It still looks um, like a faulty, right? I mean, like this connect and, and the gas, you can still tell that this is a, like a scaffold E field, but I think it looks way nicer now. So let's go with, um, you have to option like pasting a contract address and the API, but let's go with the either scan URL, which is going to be faster. And I'm going to paste the, um, this contract that I did with, with Damu for the Juicebox Hackathon. Um, it's an NFT project. So let's paste this here. And um, this is still a work in progress, but you can see that I've been um, like playing around with the contract component where I have the, you know, the contract variables on the right and the method on the methods on the on the left. And uh, I don't know, I think just with all this little change, I, it makes it uh, easier to use and it's more, you know. Um, yeah, I think just easier to use in general because here, when you have this, I don't know, everything is mixed and it's too big, I think. So and, uh, one feature that I've been working on is um, beside the, the styling is uh, the idea is to uh, being able to share this, uh, this URL with, with someone with, a, with this contact load. For example, in mind that um, we don't have a front end for this uh, NFT contract. And we want to share uh, you know, this page with someone. So this will have a, a unique URL. But it can get confusing because um, you know, a bunch of stuff here. So I started implementing like a method selection here. So you can click the, the gear here, and you get like all the methods from the, from the contract. So you can, for example, let's say that we want to send this to a friend and we want them to mint the NFT. So we can just remove all the methods and just uh, you know, um, click the mint item here. So they, we, we will generate like, a, I mean, it's not implemented right now, but we will be able to generate a unique URL with this and we'll send the URL and they will get like this when they open the, the, the link. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, I think we are close on, on having like a you know like a product like a build, and yeah, I think in the next two weeks I will be able to implement like most of the designs, and we can uh, iterate from from there. 
Will we do it with URL params? When you're talking about we'll be able to select these and have them saved, is it a, will it, what do you imagine the shareable URL will look like? Let me say it that way. Yeah, I mean, the problem with that, because you could do that. I mean, you can have like the ABI, for example, on the on the URL, but it's going to be like a really ugly URL. It's going right? to be big, like, yeah. <laughs> and big and ugly. So one thing that we can do is just, you know, having like a share button here. And when you click that, it's going to store that somewhere, you know, like a unique URL, maybe with a hash, you know, like a ABI Ninja slash whatever, like a unique number. And then we will map that number to, to, to the data that we store on the database. I don't know, that would be like a, an easy solution. Awesome. And, and I think that like we should use it, I would say it's like, it looks better, but it doesn't look like hella professional yet, right? Like, and, yeah. and like, we almost need to like use it a couple of times, even that dialogue where you're like, select all, deselect all, and then there's check boxes. Like if we use that dialogue over and over again, that could look even prettier, right? And it looks a little weird now. Like I, I think that like we this will take some iterations where we use it, we figure out what's most important, we clean the user experience down to that, and then we apply a pretty UI over the top of that. And it's just like we as the build guild need to get better at just making things look more pro. So super excited about the designer that you've linked up, uh, linked us up with too, and and seen us go through. And then the next one and the next one, like let's let's keep doing this where we take things that work well for us and let's make them pretty. And let's also like build cool shit that is very valuable and then kind of do these next iterations of style on them. Good, good build, Carlos. I, it's yeah. definitely something the ecosystem will use, right? It's a tool where you can just like, I, like I, I almost want to be able to drop in and be able to type in GTC or die or compound and have it like kind of pre-populate stuff. I, I don't know if we've talked about that much yeah. either, but like basically what you can do is you can go to Etherscan and search for GTC and then grab the Etherscan and paste it in, but almost like a level of caching or a level of uh, kind of like pre-fill pre -fill even above that would be really cool where you could drop in and type in loot and it just gives you the loot contract and you can start cleaning it up, then share that link with someone so they could go mint loot. Yeah, but, I mean, yeah. I, I agree with, with both things. Um, uh, this is a, just like the first iteration, you know, from Scaffold Teeth, and this is like the first design. And I didn't even like um, implement the, the design that Andrea gave me, you know, this is like a, my version of it because I wanted right. just to, to, you know, like put it out there. And like you said, I think it's, it's better if we start like, like instead of going to be like a pixel perfect design, Let's, let's start like using it and, yep. and then see see what we what we need, right? But yeah, like definitely it's just like let's iterate and next version is going to be better, next version is going to be better. Uh, so yep. yeah. So I, yep. I, I think we will get something really good at the end. Great. Great work, Carlos. Good job. And shout out to developer Marwan and some oh, yeah. of the other folks that kind of like laid the foundation for the early versions of ABI Ninja. I think. Isaac forked it for his uh, Flashbot starter kit. And I think Bliss even has his own uh, ABI Ninja-like branch. I don't know if that's what we're seeing today from Bliss, but uh, there, there's definitely some different iterations of this and we may find different functionality being interesting or product market fit within the ecosystem or something. So it's all about iterating and I, I'm really excited about some of these builds looking a little prettier for sure. <laughs> awesome build, Carlos. Okay, I think up next is Supernova. I can't even remember what Supernova has to present. Uh, my intuition is it's yeah. maybe a ZK thing. Here he is, here they are, go ahead. Uh, no, the ZK thing is the skill under development. Uh, I'm sharing the screen contact. Go, go ahead and share if you can. There we go, we got it, got it. Cool. Uh, so yeah. yeah, this is the contract. So uh, let me show some changes that I, I made. So the first okay, one so is this I is, added the, yeah. this is to the BG stream contract. So to provide some context, all the builders within the build guild receive a stream. It's basically funds are locked up from the, the EF gives money to the build guild, which locks up money in these streams. And then builders withdraw from the stream as they do work. And I think you have created just some, uh, just making it more yeah, yeah. cleaner. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, so I added some, uh, so I added uh, mutable 
So what this does is it so the EVM will not have to store uh, the three variables as these will not change uh, forever. So adding immutable saves this uh, value to the bytecode itself. So if I copy my address and go to the either scan and if I remove the zero, if you can see this that the address is in the bytecode. So it does not need to save uh, in the code and it helps with guess. And similarly, if I uh, see the frequency, it's 3600 and you can see it's also in the uh, bytecode. So yeah, so these are pretty gas saving uh, stuff. And I added some custom errors to save some uh, more gas. And this is the constructor, it's the same, the same logic. And in the stream balance, you can see I have uh, added some assembly. So uh, this is the this is called a switch. It basically works like an if else. So if uh, then this is called a greater than. So if this is greater than a uh, frequency, then balance will be assigned to the cap that is 0 0.5 either. And if this is not true, then balance will be assigned to this. And this is the multiplication of code. Uh, this will be multiplied by this. And this is the subtract of code. This is the divide of code, or like simply this. And uh, this is the same. So this is the function that will be called uh, the most by the builders. So this need to be uh, optimized more. So what I've done is I've cached some uh, storage in there. So we do not have to call the storage more again and again. And so this also saves some gas. Uh, and here is the assembly code. So I have declared a variable cap blast. This is the subtract of code timestamp minus frequency. And if uh, this is the less than of code, and if less, if last is less than cap last, last will be assigned to cap last. And this is the again, then I will be assigning last variable to this of code. So this is pretty much the same add, divide, and multiply. It has the same logic as the previous one. So and as you can see, here is the S store of code. So what it does is uh, you can go to the event of codes. So the first is the key value. The key is the uh, storage slot. So uh, every contract has some storage slot starting from 0, 1, 2, 3. So since, uh, as you can see here, uh, the UN public class, this is not an immutable, immutable variable. So it is stored in the storage. So we can check where it is stored and then we can just use the S store of code and we will save, uh, save it in that slot. And uh, this is the value. We will save last to the, uh, the slot. So one option is to use the last dot slot option. This will automatically get the slot and save it there. Or you can check it here. So if I do the, uh, using the forge, I will check the storage slots of this contract. Uh, Yeah, so as you can see, the first storage slot is called zero and it's a UN64 and the label is last. So we know that last is stored in the slot zero. So what you can do is you can just remove this and add zero instead. And this will save the last uh, yeah, in the storage slot of zero. And this is the same uh, uh, there. So uh, this has resulted in some 7,000 gas savings. Let me check, yeah. Yeah, so you can see here the gas uh, is 38,000 and the normal contract uh, takes 45,000 gas. So yeah, that's it uh, pretty much. Awesome stuff. Supernovas, the assembly warrior. Getting into assembly and doing this stuff, that's, uh, that's, that's definitely beyond me and something that I have not learned yet. That's really cool stuff. I, I was surprised to see that you were doing this uh, in Remix and then you jumped over to Forge and Foundry. And that's where I feel like this is probably, you probably did most of this work in Foundry and tested it or something. Yeah. You were just showing yeah. it off in Remix. Is that right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Cool. Foundry cool. is the, yeah. yeah. Great, Bill. That's, it's uh, this, this, this whole like making contracts save an extra 7,000 or 8,000 gas 
is something that definitely is like something I don't do very often, but it's really cool. And, and thank you for, uh, it's, it's almost like teaching us too, right? Like, I feel like this, at this level, we can get in and tinker around and you showing it off, like exposes us to some of these cool changes. It's, uh, I, I would want to test it some more, right? Like, did you, did you write a test suite in, in Foundry so we can run through and make sure that like, basically it's going to work the way it, it needs to on all the different test cases? Or is it more like, eh, we deployed it and it withdraws and it works? Like how, at what, at what, at what confidence level are you? Like, are you very confident that it's tested or should we test it some more before we start deploying these? Yeah, I have made uh, three, four main tests like uh, withdraw and deposit it in Foundry. Like you can check in the GitHub. So yeah, I think it, it will work. Awesome, awesome, great. Well, great, good work, Supernovas. Keep hacking. I think last week you showed off like a ZK board game. This week you're showing off uh, assembly and, and saving gas. So keep questing and keep learning. I feel like you on your journey, you're, you're, you're really, I feel like coming into it now and really learning a bunch of things. So yeah, thank, thank you for sharing your journey with us and keep building and keep doing awesome stuff. All right, I think Bliss is up next. Is a, is a homie Bliss around? Are you out there, Bliss? Hey, what are you folks, showing off I'm today? Yeah, yeah. Um, what do you got? <laughs> it's basically the contract side of um, scaffolding. I think you know, uh, Carlos have already kind of front run that already. And, you know, <laughs> it's showing all the beautiful, it's showing all the beautiful and fancy things, and I just got the boring contracts to show. Um, but well, maybe we mix the two together or something. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Yeah, let's see what we've got. Hopefully, we yeah. get there. So for me, the goal was to at some point. Um, if if ever we take away like you know if if ever someone else is working on a project that is not built with scaffolded from scratch and you want to be able to to tinker with like any contract even if it's on localhost on pre or pretty much any network you can easily you know have that set up and edit things as you want and uh, interact with any contract say on localhost or any other network so let me share my screen right here Okay, and you know, um, so I made it into an NPM package where you can do NPX e contractor and it asks you to install, and then you have that, and you can go to localhost 420 and be able to pull up, you know, uh, the contract app here, you know. And then you can load pretty much any contract. I have the sample like GTC contract here, so you can just load that. But you have you can add a name and a contract address and an ABI and then load that. So I load the you know the Gitcoin GTC contract and I can interact with it you know as I need. And if I have something running on localhost, I can easily switch to localhost and be able to you know work on it the way I want to. Or upstream or pretty much on the network. So that's. That's the rundown of it. That's probably what 20, 30 seconds, but that's that's the goal. You can start using it anytime you want. And oh, one more thing. If you want to run it on a different uh, port, just do a dash P, let's say 2000. Hopefully I have 2000 open. Uh, yeah, like 420 is like working. below 1024, right? So it's <laughs> yes. in like the, I don't know. I don't know what the, that, the zero to 1024 port range is like for root or something like that, right? It's one of those that you kind of stay away from. Yes. But yes. but the 420 for the memes, I mean, I understand where you're going <laughs> with it. I wonder I wonder if if you ran MPX ETH contractor with, with it going to the default 420 port, if it would fail on a lot of machines because it would say you need root access. Whereas yeah. if it defaulted to something like 4200, like adding the extra zero there may make it work on a lot more machines uh, out of the box. But yeah, I, it's one of those things we just need to use and see how it works, right? Actually, Actually that makes sense. Wants. Maybe that's what I can, I can set it to. You know, yeah, something like that. Then, yeah, you know, we'll where you still get the like means. That. Or like 42069 or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But yeah. yeah, so this is kind of like, you know, uh, and then it comes with the, you know, the, the so in case you are on localhost and you need to use the throwaway wallet that you can use to interact with things, you don't have to connect your wallet and deal with all the nonce issues that, that comes with uh, MetaMask mostly. Uh, you can work on this and, and use it locally. But yeah, that's that's it. And I'm taking, you know, some 
inputs or any thoughts on how we can improve this and make it better and whatnot if anybody has any. Great stuff. And I think, so, so my intuition here is that with a lot of these products that we're using, even like the punk wallet, I think people are going to run, want to run them on localhost. I think, I think they will. I think there's a handful of folks that like are never going to input anything into a website, even, even like a contract ABI or even doing things. And we'll want like to have that all running locally. Same thing with like multisig.lol or punk wallet. If you're spinning up a quick wallet and you're putting in a, like a brain wallet seed phrase, uh, I could see people leaning back and wanting to do all of that on localhost. So we'll we'll see as we build these products and as people start using them, we may want to have this kind of like MPX version of the product. So whatever it is, you could always just MPX run it and just have it up locally and have the code be like verified. Like this is the git, this is this git commit that's been tagged as stable and signed by the build guild. And I know that like all those changes past that are maybe weird, but like I can, I can get just this version of that code and run it locally and, and run it safely. I think that like the build guild is pretty wild and we do things kind of unsafe, but I think that as we have more mature products, folks that use our products will probably want some kind of like safer version. And I could totally see an NPX punk wallet, NPX, ABI Ninja, MPX, yeah, all, all this stuff. So it's just like a cool practice to kind of build this stuff out and try it out. So good, good build bliss. I think we have uh, maybe one more. I think it's Damu after bliss. I think unless anybody else has anything else to add, I think Damu is up next and we may have a little game to play or something. Hit me up in the chat if you want to add anything here. I should probably go check my DMs to see if anybody else wanted to join too. But yeah, I think you're you're up, Damu. Take it away. Hi, hi. Um, I'm sharing my screen now. Yeah, we've got Mora. Yeah, Mora. This is the game I'm, I'm implementing. Uh, so uh, Mora is a game where where um, each player show a, a hand with uh, some finger uh, and uh, try to guess the total finger from all the players. Uh, so uh, maybe you you show two finger and say uh, 10 as the total. Uh, and uh, the player that guess, guesses the total number uh, win one point. Going to uh, need some so, kind of zero knowledge or commit reveal here, aren't we? This is going to be yeah. some hidden knowledge stuff. Yeah. Uh, can you see the? Yeah, we've got it. Looks like you've got it deployed to Robston. Yeah, I will share the link in the chat. And I will create a game to be able to join uh, and play that game. This is some rough term. I'm in. Let me one second that uh, I create a session game and we'll share uh, the, the link with you. This is an interesting, uh, we're thinking of like, as we're building things, like what components are used a lot in a lot of games. And this is like the the kind of like waiting room or like, uh, I, don't, I don't know what it's called, but it's like, there's this, this kind yes. of room where we all get together to join a game and we all have to stake into it or something. It seems like that that small component is a component that we should build for a bunch of games. Just have like the waiting room available, have have people be able to stake in and then it moves you into another round. Sorry to interrupt. Keep going, Damu. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I share I share the the game uh, uh, if you complete the this uh, game address in this uh, box you can join the game so that's an e30 yes okay i'm joining trip player now and now transactions on robston basically I'm... take 15 seconds right because it moved to proof of stake robston is just like a a clean yes. 15 seconds every time cool yes
And do we have randomness? We have the TDD randomness, but it's future block hash. So you have to use a future block, no, right? No, no, no. I, I don't have any randomness. No randomness. This is all no. just uh, like a knowledge, like a, uh, what's it called? Asymmetric knowledge game or something like that. It's one of those games where you have hidden information and, and you try to guess. Yes, you have only your information and you, you don't know the, the information for the other player. So I joined and I see me on your screen is joined, but my screen is still kind of at the uh, join please, screen. Does sorry, it not move please. until you start it? Yeah, it's just okay. a, an early prototype. This. Uh, just Word. click on the, on, the, on the game address on the top and you will see this uh, page. Oh yeah, there we go. Yep. There we go, okay. So you join and then you need to click the game address to go through. Eventually I, I, I will make it, I will, yeah, I will yeah. make it easy, but it's just an early prototype. I just sure. want to show you guys the... I'm glad, I'm glad that we're using an early prototype. That makes yeah. me happy. <laughs> <laughs> we are seven now. Anyone missing? Eight. <laughs> nice. Should I start the game or I should I wait? Let's do it. I think that I think that's about uh, yeah. I think that's a uh, good list of names here. Yeah. Okay. I will start the game. How much money we got on this? What are we betting? <laughs> no, no, no money. No money, <laughs> no, no money now. <laughs> then we can we can talk about money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. So you will see, you 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 must see in this uh, same uh, page where where you can select how many finger uh, you want to show. And then you can input the total uh, guess for all the finger for all the player. So, so we have eight players, and you can pick between players. zero and five. And you pick yours, and then you guess at the total. And are we? Do we get penalized if we go over or under, or is it no, just like if you no, get it lucky no, and no, get? Yeah, no, uh, you will get a point just for get the the exact number. Okay. Uh, I think I well, think the maximum is fifteen. I think I was trying to put eight. like more than fifteen. Um, oh. Oh. Can, oh. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're gonna need more than fifteen because it's gonna be like. Uh, wait a minute! I kind of. Like... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean. I, I yeah. don't. I don't test it uh, with more than three players. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, right there. All right, we're going to do some live code updating here. There we go. Uh, one, one second, one second. <laughs> Char, <Char> build. <laughs> Building. So you're going to deploy it all the way to live to Surge. Yeah. And the game will probably just keep going. Yes, we'll just yes. be able to update that one text box. That's so build yield. I love this so much. <laughs> like that's so raw prototyping. <laughs> building, building. Come on, Serge. Come on, build. <laughs> mm -hmm. So okay, so some people could guess the same number, and it's just going to be the reward will be split if those if two people guess no, the exact just, right number. Just one point end? for each. Just okay. one point for each uh, player that gets the, the total number. Okay, okay. So it's a point system, and the only way to get points is to end up being the one who guesses the correct total. Yes, the, the first okay. one that gets three points win the game, or, oh, uh, I after, see. Ten, or after 10 rounds, uh, the player that has more, more points. Uh, cool. Wins. Now we should be the plush. Give it a give it a reload and see if you can go yeah. higher than. Oh no, I get a blank screen. Oh, maybe it's still. Uh, maybe enter. Oh, you gotta the pull the game. Page. So go to the yep. Go to the, the oh, because and, and, surge. Yep. Yeah. And then click the game address. Exactly. There we go. Yep. 
Yep. So yeah. go to mora.search.sh and then click the active game and you should be back into the game. Yeah. So, um, uh, all right, uh, I'm guessing. Here we go. Yeah. The guess, uh, if we are a player, the guess is from zero to 40. Um, well, you will see my, my uh, play, but uh, not the other player. <laughs> can see. <laughs> what are you going to guess, Samu? 20. He's guessing 20. <laughs> 20. And I play. And what happens? Is there any, is there any kind of, what happens if no one, if someone like griefs us? Like what if Zach never plays? Is there a way to like keep moving or penalize or something like that? No, no, no. For now, uh, in okay. the commit phase, uh, um, I don't. I doesn't uh, make uh, any. It's yes in the reveal phase. Uh, the, there is a timeout for the re reveal phase. So um, I think all of us have played except for FN twenty one eighty seven. We're waiting on FN twenty one eighty seven to make their move. Um, and this is uh, is uh, making a, a commit uh, with the um, with the number the total number and a, an a auto generated password uh, making a, a hash uh, uh, to be able to, uh, to avoid to reveal what you are uh, guessing. Uh-oh, <laughs> what if what if one player is stuck? Oh no, they're getting transaction failed. Maybe reload and try again. Do we need to send you some Robston? Hit us with an address yeah, if we yeah. need to send all, you some Robston. Player, oh, succeeded, player, succeeded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. we got Perfect. it. And, and now you- Now we you, reveal. Yeah. Is that right? Just, yeah, you just uh, need to click on reveal. And now the- the number and the total and the and the password is sent to the contract and verify that it's the same uh, hash uh, that before. So, so um, in a future version, we'll probably have some block hash and you have to reveal or commit by that time. And if you don't, you're like out of the game somehow. Uh, yeah, and, and yeah. It's, it's, it's already made this one. Okay. Uh, um, here, uh, I, I I have a bug in the in the time, but after three minutes, if uh, uh, you 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 reach the deadline and you can just call the finish round, and if someone doesn't re, uh, have revealed, uh, well, uh, he he don't uh, win that uh, round. So we have here the the reveals event for each player. It looks like uh, FN 2187 was the closest because we went a little lower than, right? It looks like the the total is something like 13 and they guessed 14. Uh, yeah, the total is... Uh, it's a lot smaller than we all guessed. Yeah, I, I feel like yeah, we yeah. almost need to do this in a couple of rounds and it's it's about like the feedback circle as it works. Yeah, yeah. So who won? How, how does it? So no one gets no, any points. Nobody, right? nobody, nobody. All right, nobody nobody right. Next, round, next round. Next round. Next round. Yeah. Here we go. So Here we go. We, we I'm guessing uh, smaller now. <laughs> we didn't have to, to increment the input after all. With 15 was enough, right? Yeah. Yeah. 15 would have been fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Should we try one more round? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I love I love how you like figure out how to make a, a hand making four by just doing two twos and like the <laughs> I love you symbol for three. That's good stuff. All right, who's in this next game? Big money on this one. Now it's going to be a super big number. Yeah, the, yeah, you gotta, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's the way like the it auto corrects, right? Like a very human feedback loop. Yeah. 
Okay, so how long did it take you to build this, Damu? Just like, a couple of days. Yeah. Right, right. Scaffold ETH allows you to prototype this kind of stuff quickly. You probably spent yeah. most of your time building this like UI. How like how much time did you spend on the smart contract first on the writing the React? Uh, maybe half and, and, and half. Um, half and half. I use, not bad. Yeah, yeah. Because I use the uh, rock sizer uh, and paper uh, branch. Oh uh, yeah. The rock a, paper a scissors. Scene. Yeah, the, this branch have a similar interface. So, uh, and I took the, the contract at the at base too. So I uh, I started from this and yeah. Um, but well, uh, now I have a, a lot of event that I don't uh, show in right now. I, I am showing just the real event, but uh, the idea is to maybe uh, build a subgraph with all the information and be able to show more information to the user. Um, well, uh, here you can, you, you don't see the, the, in the total for a, a round, you have to sum this manually. Yeah. There's a couple of little nice things that might go into just like getting behavior to shift one way or the other. Like the reveal button is a little small. You kind of want everything to go away and just have a reveal button. So it's obvious, but. All right, here we go. Are we revealing? Let's see who won this round. Someone's got to get it. Waiting for the reveal. It would be more fun if we had money on the line. <laughs> oh, man, th this transaction's taken a long time. Oh, there it yeah. went. That's it. Oh, look at us all go. All right. No, nothing. No, nobody win again. Nobody <laughs> got it again. Dang it. What was the total? Uh, yeah. 14, oh, <laughs> now all the people. 21, a, maybe? A high number. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But no one guessed 21. It should be almost like the person that's closest somehow, but I don't even yeah, know. Yeah, I, I was yeah. thinking about that. Or, or maybe. You just get the the point uh, with the uh, difference between your number and the total number. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, well, uh, the inverse. Like everyone scores an amount that's the difference from the main number, or like yeah, yeah. The inverse the total of the number, difference from the, the main number. The total number minus the difference. Yep. Yep. So if you get the exact number, you get the full point. Yeah, something like that. Uh, and we well, don't see the total at all, right? Uh, FN no, no. is asking about the total. You don't see it. Basically, that would be yeah. a nice thing to have. Yeah, yeah but we're yeah, already absolutely. playing a game. Like you, you, yeah. you can in 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 the in a matter of days whip together a, a full on chain game prototype, and we can play it and try it and see what the social dynamic is, and see you know what works and what doesn't work, and you can go back to the drawing board and kind of clean it out. Yeah, and Zach's asking what would happen if it times out, right? And and yeah, we, basically because of this, you need some game theory here to uh, kind of incentivize players to play. And if they don't play, you need to penalize them somehow or something. Yeah, yeah, sure. Maybe if a player that doesn't play, I I uh, take some point from the display the player or something like yeah, that. <laughs> this is great. I think. Honestly, like Damu could just build games and we play them every Friday. And that's just what we, <laughs> whoops. I didn't mean to pause the recording. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Damu. Very good stuff, man. Thank you, uh, thank I you. love, I love playing blockchain games, especially uh, scaffold ETH prototype blockchain games. All right. Thank you all for being here. Happy Bowtie Friday. Keep building cool shit on Ethereum. Keep building stuff with scaffold ETH. Make sure you speed run Ethereum. Keep building stuff. Hearts, hearts, hearts. All right. See you guys. Happy Friday. See you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.